Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. In this video, you're gonna learn if you're a sales pro and you wanna make more money, this man Dennis is about to tell us how to do it. You're about to blow up. Check it out. All right, guys, Andy Elliott. I'm here with my man, Dennis. Dennis, what's up, brother? What's Thanks up, for man? being here, guys. Me and Dennis have done a lot of events together. Now, I want you to understand something. I come from an automotive background, okay? Now, we train everybody in every industry now, but my man, Dennis, here now, he runs about how many stores? Is it eight or nine? Nine. We got ten coming on. Yeah, he, so he's running about almost ten stores, okay? He's in charge of all the financial numbers, marketing, a whole bunch of other stuff. But what Dennis has is a very unique gift to teach finance. Now, I want you to understand something. What I've seen Dennis do with a lot of people, and that's what I said salespeople, managers, GMs, everybody, pay attention. You're going to get more value today than you've ever gotten. On the finance end, what Dennis does is that he teaches people how to basically be recession-proof. He teaches anyone, and I'm going to say anyone, so anyone watching this, he can teach you how to become a pro in finance. Number one, make more money than you ever imagined in your life, okay, and go to the top. So if you're wanting to go to the top and be the top 1% earner, whether you're in the automotive industry or any industry, understanding finances is a very key point. Now, Dennis, I'm going to turn this over. I'll ask some questions to you. Um, number one, just tell us who you are, how long you've been in finance. By the way, I've done business only with one person in the entire country. Every day I get text messages. Andy, I'm the best in finance. I'm the best in the world in finance. I'm the best. Can we do business together? No, I love you. I'm grateful for you. This is my dude. Why? Because he gets freaking results. This guy, when we do events together, every individual that comes in the room, number one, becomes a master communicator. Extremely important. How to speak, how to talk, how to articulate the words. Two, master presenter. You know, it's, it's funny how so many salespeople are like, or my bad, finance guys, we'll call them. Everybody sells. But during finance, they say, well, what, what if somebody says they don't want a warranty? What if somebody says they don't want gap? What if somebody says this or that or this? He's like, listen, had you presented it right there would have never been an objection. Okay, now I want you to remember that. That's called the 1% language, okay? The other 99%, they're saying, well, man, what happens when you do this? This guy says, no, I can teach you to be so deadly with the way you present, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you understand what's going on. It's a chess move. They all say yes, okay? I've seen him take an average normal person getting into finance week one, go in, sell two or three products per deal run finance gap penetration like, and warranty penetration like no one else, and have the customers stay in that store, in that company forever, and love that store. You know what I love? Dennis always says finance is the last touch, right? You're the last touch. After that sale, a great finance guy not only secures the, the contract, the deal, secures more money, but also secures the relationship forever. My man Dennis right here teaches people how not to be amateurs, but to be pros. And in a world right now where a lot of people are amateurs, they honestly, most finance people and sales people don't self-develop every day. On this call, on this training, you're going to become addicted. You're going to become obsessed with self-development. And Dennis is about to shower some freaking fire on us and love. And, you know, he ain't all checked and fired like me. He actually is. But he does it in his own tone, in his own language. And, and... And he can train anybody, which is why I partner with him. He can teach anyone. And when I, when I say the word anyone, I mean, if you're like me, like I stuttered when I was young. I thought I had a learning disability. I didn't think I understood stuff. The way that Dennis breaks it down, no matter who you are, you'll understand. And by the way, once he talks to you, we're doing an event that's coming up very soon. I would love for you guys to be there, okay? So grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, take some notes my man Dennis, I'll give you my cell phone number here in a little bit. You can text me if you'd like to get information on it. We'll be happy to send it to you or your store. And if you're a salesperson, he goes, well, I'm not in finance. No, 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 no. Listen to me. I can show you. He will teach you this one-day event how to go get a job in any company in the world in finance. Walk straight into your door, they'll, uh, to your dealership you're at right now, and they'll hire you on the spot. So you want to make all the dough? You want to be freaking super valuable? Here's your chance. So, Dennis, number one, how old are you? Tell us about your family. Tell us how long you've been in the business. And just rock and roll, man. We well, love you. Thanks, man. I really appreciate you having me come down to the lion's den. Every time I come down and visit Andy and his team, like, I'm on another level. And I'm just I'm buzzing sitting in the chair next to you and being with your team today. So, number one, thank you for that. But uh, 
My name is Dennis Gingrich. You know, actually, yesterday I turned 44, so I'm really excited about that. Look good, dude. Dude, trying, man. Got to take care of the temple, man, so you can take care of other people. I know you do that every day. Yeah. But, uh, super important to me to really develop people. That, that's what I live for. That you know, I, I, I quickly found that I like working with people and helping people accomplish their goals and dreams, and everybody's got different ones. So number one, that's what I like to do. But uh, a little bit about me, man. Like I said, I turned 44 yesterday. You know, I'm married, my wife, Jessica. We got five great kids, 23, 21. I got a 20-year-old, uh, and I got a nine and 10-year-old. All about those kids. I got great kids, I'm truly blessed. But I've been in the automotive industry really since before I was 18. My dad uh, started in uh, Southern California for Bob Wondry's Ford back in the early 70s as a salesperson. And I will say this to my dad, who's also Dennis, best belly to belly salesperson I've ever met. Truly an amazing guy. Uh, can't awesome. thank him enough for everything he gave me. He's a big part of why I'm sitting here today. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. By the way, that's called mentorship, okay? And if you didn't have a dad like that, you know, I didn't have a dad that taught me sales and business. Listen, you want to listen to Dennis because he's dangerous. And I'm going to tell you this. I've had large companies pay Dennis a lot of money to come in and teach people who have been in finance for 5, 10, 15 years. And literally, they were running two grand, twenty five hundred a copy, and they, th they thought they were killing it. Dennis will take him to three grand, four grand a copy. These same people by the simple principles he teaches. So I just want to tell you, like, whether you're a veteran, listen to me. You got to go back and have a growth mindset. And I honestly underestimated you, you know, because we think of a, of a, a closer, a badass, this guy. Dude, this guy is the velvet hammer, which in, in the finance office is extremely important. Because a lot of the times on the front side, they see salespeople with a lot of energy, right? Which, hey, I love energy. I think it's super important. And I know that you have it too and you like to have fun. But the way that you articulate your words when you're presenting, it's dangerous. You know, when we first did our first training together, I remember everybody, when you did the too good to be uh, true close, yeah. I honestly dropped my jaw and this guy could sell you everything he has on his piece of paper. Every, everything. It's the most dangerous close in the history of time. Right. And I've memorized it to the team. He taught it to me. So the closer is being learned from other closers. This guy is is dangerous and he's ethical and he has integrity and his morals are through the roof. And I just need you to know this, that this is your time to change and uh, keep going. So your dad taught you, you had a mentor. That's amazing. Here's everybody's chance to learn. Yeah, I mean, it was great. You know, I turned 18 and, you know, my, you know, my dad was always a hard worker. We had a lot of fun. We did nice things. And then I went off to college, the University of Nevada, Reno, and I still wanted nice things, you know, and my dad always said, man, you can have whatever you want, but you just got to work hard so you can have it. And so I'm like, okay, I need to get a job. And, you know, he always did well for himself. So I was like, well, hey, I think I'm going to sell cars. And, you know, a buddy of his that they came up in the business together, he, you know, he owned a small independent dealership and ultimately it grew, blew up, and he's done great things for his life, but gave me an opportunity to sell cars and go to school at the same time. And awesome. my college upbringing, going to University of Nevada, Reno, like I didn't go to football games, basketball games. I didn't get the typical college experience. I'd go jam out my classes and then I'd come back and I'd be, at the gate, as you like to say, sitting on the tail, tailgate, reading a book, whatever I needed to study, and yeah. up would come in. I was the first guy there, and you know, I found success uh, early. You know, here I was, 18. You know, consistently leading the board, uh, doing a good job, and you know, wasn't working as much as the other guys. And you know, all my buddies, when we got to go out, we got to go have a good time because you know, we, I had the funds to to go do that. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, she got really real for me quick because I was 19. I found out that I was going to have my first kid. Um, and it was like, man, I got a, you know, I got some real responsibility here. And um, so I kept going. And then uh, I did some stuff on the back, back of a lot. You shouldn't do it a business. And I mean, I would never encourage this, but I got caught. And I remember they sent me home, you know, and they're going like, I get a phone call the next day. And of course, overnight, I'm like, dude, what am I going to do? You know, I got a kid on the way. I got to figure this out. And the general manager calls me. And I remember he had this big red couch, Andy. And he, he, he called me in. He's like, hey, I want you to come in. And I, here I, I show up, you know, I'm skinny little kid, you know, still. And he goes, dude, I want you to lay down on the couch. I felt like I was in the psychologist's office. And he's like, no, like, like lay down and we're going to talk. And, 
you know, he goes, what were you doing? And I go, dude, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of bored. I want to grow. I, you know, I keep winning. I'm doing good. And I just want to grow and develop. Right. So I get, you know, when I'm thinking about sales guys that want to grow and develop, like you're my people, we're, we're the same, you know, growth and development. That's what people need in general, right? That's where they find fulfillment because if you're, you know, a body of water, if it stagnates, it's rotten. It's not a good place to be in the human soul, the human mind, and just us as, as people, that's not what we need to be. We need to be fluid. We need to be moving. We need to be growing. So we feel good about who we are as, as people, which I think is most important, right? Feeling good about who you are as a person is number one. And when you feel good there, right, that's the foundational, everything else seems to fall in place, right? And it comes faster for other people. It comes slower for others, but it's out there. So, you know, always keeping that growth mindset, like that's what it means to be human, at least in, in my opinion. But, uh, and then, so we go through this whole conversation and he's like, all right, beat it. And then uh, I'm going to call you tomorrow. You better answer my call. And I'm like, okay. So he calls me and he, he calls me back in and then he goes, all right, we want you to go do finance, uh, down at our smaller, like the original gas station lot. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to do finance. So, you know, I got thrown into doing finance. It was a smaller independent store. We, you know, we were doing, I don't know, 30 to 50 cars, you know, and it was really cool because it was all a bunch of younger guys, like his nephew there, you know, he was a couple years older than me. I think he was like 22 at the time. Mm -hmm. And all the salespeople was all these guys in their young 20s. And, you know, we were out there, but he gave us this opportunity at this, you know, this gas station and we had to do it all, man. Like I learned, everything about finance you know it was packaging the deals you know making photocopies knowing what every single bank did for advance debt ratio all the stuff but i had to do it it was like you know you never want to learn when you learn long division you need to be able to do it by hand before you get the calculator Facts. right and that's what i believe is you got to learn the basic foundational things and whatever you're doing you know whether it be sales whether it be finance and you know, sales in the automotive space, uh, it, it's the same out on the line. And it's not really any different in finance, in my opinion. And quite frankly, it, there's a lot of commonality even in the service drive to what we're gonna talk about here today that you can transfer not only in the automotive industry, but into other spaces, insurance, you know, selling financial products and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of crossover, but I think for, for you guys on, on the call, you know, you sales guys that are hungry and you're, you're, you want that growth and maybe you see that finance guy that's in the back room doing really well for himself and you want that for you, like, dude, it's yours. It's yours for the taking because there's a lot of people, specifically in automotive, um, that get a little bit comfortable. They take, they take for granted. Super comfortable. They get super comfortable. They really take it for granted, you know, and I think- guys. In the automotive industry, it will print money. Print. It's, it's, it should almost be illegal how much money you can make in the automotive industry if you're trained. Okay, so continue to listen. By the way, listen, if anybody watching this real quick, write down this number. Just get, grab a pen, write this down, okay? 918-210-0254. This gentleman, who I will tell you is one of the greatest of all times, Okay, 918-210-0254, you text me, say, give me information on the finance event coming up. I will send it over to you. It's in Scottsdale, Arizona. You will be with me and him for one day, and you will leave dangerous. Okay, I'll just tell you, we'll ruin the value of money for you. You will leave a completely different human being. And, and, and I love what you're saying. You said you got to learn how to do it with the pencil before you get a calculator. You know, like... Like, guys, let us teach you the real way. The way that lasts. No, you, if, if you get a foundational understanding of anything, I don't care what it is, but if you really understand the basics of really any anything in the world, like I can't think of a, a, a situation where this wouldn't apply. Like if you don't have your, your basic foundational stuff and know all the little details that really are foundational to delivering a finished quality product, you know, that's from delivering a car to a customer, you know, out in front of the dealership or, you know, handing the customer the envelope full, all the paperwork they just signed with all the great protection products. If you don't know all the things that go into that, and it's not hard, it's not hard. It's just that people have a hard time because they take what they have for granted and get this cavalier attitude about it. 
you know, that it's, you know, they just gloss over things that are truly simple, but they're, they're important. Like what we do, I would say it's hard, right? It's, it's hard, but it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, hard is, yeah, you got it. Like if you're a sales guy, you got to make a lot of calls, text, emails, yeah, everything and get a lot we're of rejection. doing is hard. That pays well. A hundred percent. If it's easy, you, you're pay. not going to have a good life, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, I think we're all here on this planet to have a good life and feel fulfilled, but you need somebody in your life that is willing to, to pour in the time and the energy mm -hmm. to make sure your foundation is solid. You know, everybody needs a mentor and there's a lot of people out there you know, some of you guys that are listening to this right now, maybe you don't have a mentor. You know, maybe you don't have somebody that, you know, has a give a shit level about another human being because they're truly in it all for, for themselves. themselves. And that's the reality, right? It's, you know, it, there's we, a lot of that. There is a lot of it. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, we can we can change it. But right? that's not everybody. And that's and that's why we do these these, you know, these these talks so you guys can listen. And I want to tell you something. If I want to talk directly to some people right now who are not in the finance department yet. Um, you've been selling cars, you've been killing it or not doing well, it doesn't matter to me, and you're looking for a change. Like Dennis always talks about, looking for a change. Let me explain this to you. Office job, don't chase cars anymore. You're out of the heat, you're inside. Printer, desk, chair, brain, right? Mouthpiece, quick turns, lots of money. Skilled. Okay, great attitudes, love what you do, okay, big money. That's what this man will teach you. I notice a lot of people when they move into F&I, they get sent out to F&I schools, okay, schools, and they go out to these schools, literally they're teaching a classroom of people. A lot of the times they just want to get the money, get you through the classroom, get you back to the dealership. It's hard to find somebody who truly gives a shit about everybody. And what I love about you, Dennis, is that every person, I've noticed that, like in these finance schools, it's almost that they can prejudge who's going to make it and who's not. The guy that shows up in the suit, he's got the slick mouthpiece, he's a real good speaker, he does this. Dennis, I've learned that you almost believe in everybody, or you do believe in everybody. And I've watched people who were probably counted out, who most people didn't think they could make it. And the way that you teach them to talk and present when they go home and these simple, you break it down so simple, uncomplicated, finance sounds like, oh, I'm gonna get into numbers. It's really none of that. They go back to their stores and their salespeople and they walk up to their general managers and they say, I paid for my own financing class because I would like to move up. I would like for you to let me show you how I'd present numbers if somebody came back to the finance office. And within five minutes of their general manager sitting down and listening to you talk to them, they will offer you a job in finance on the spot. Guaranteed. That's what this event's about. That's that number I just gave you, 918-210-0254. If you're ready to level up and you want to go into the finance department and you want to be the top 1% in their industry, you want to make 20 grand a month, 50 grand a month, I don't care. What do you want to make? This is where you're going to learn it in one day. Now, listen, one of the best teachers I've ever seen in my life. You're slow to speak and your words are dangerous. You teach word tracks, not theories, not like, well, if somebody was to say that, I'd kind of say this. This guy teaches word for word what to say, and when you say it, it works. It's the craziest thing, and it works for everybody. Um, but one of the things that I just want to stop and talk to the salespeople who maybe you're wanting to move up in the future, this is your opportunity because in your company, if you do get put in finance one day, normally what happens is that you end up shadowing another finance guy and that guy is trying to make money on his own and train you. Do you think he wants you to take his money or she does? No, they want you to take the cash deals. They want you to take the crap stuff. They want you to do the stuff you don't like. And that's the reason why people get a bitter taste in finance right out the gate is because they end up do, being basically somebody else's um, assistant. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not fair. Yeah, yeah. And you're not being treated as somebody to get a fair opportunity. When you walk in, and I've seen people that are in finance for 20 years that come in and they're like, oh my God, man. Like, I have been so disconnected. Like, I, and by the way, I've never been. Um, who did you work for before that you did finance training with? What was the name of the company? Oh, uh, the finance insurance yeah. company. I worked for Zurich. Yeah, Zurich. So, so Zurich is a huge company. They're massive. Um, Dennis, how long did you work for Zurich? I worked for them just a couple months shy, eight years. Okay, eight years. He ran accounts and trained people for Zurich. 
Now, I need you to understand something. He's watched every method that every finance department cha- that teaches. He's watched the good. He's watched the bad. You've watched every finance trainer in the country. You've seen them all. You've heard it all. You've watched every strategy. Guys, Dennis works for the Nilo Auto Group, which is in California. Now, I need you to understand the Nilo Group, one of the highest, highest uh, I would say, sought-after companies in respect, dignity, and stuff. Like, you guys are on point, and they don't let anybody come in there. Like you got to be the best. Am I correct? No, that's it, man. I really look at the Nilo like it's, company. Like it, it, it's like it's like one to ten. They're like twelve on like customer service, like off the charts, like breaking the chart on customer service. Dennis makes sure that he trains his people every day to not only provide customer service that their clients have never seen in their life, but also make sure that everything works out great. So I need you to understand this. The guy that you're dealing with, he's been in F and I. His whole life, done it himself. So he's, he's not, in theory, telling you what he should do. He did it and killed it. He also taught it with Zurich, okay, which means he did it for eight years. He was a teacher. And now he's running an entire auto group, and literally he's making sure that it's working just right, and their numbers are amazing. But the way they take care of people is unreal. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. This guy can teach you to have value, a value on you in which no one else in the world has. And if you want to be a top one percenter, like I really think that like you teach multi-dimension, like from protecting the dealership to making money to explaining value, because making money is explaining value, to protecting the client. Protecting the client is huge. You know, D- Dennis always asks a common question. He's got these golden questions that he asks. He says, hey, where do you think um, car dealerships make their most money? And he's like, do you think it's in sales or service? And the customers always say, sales. It's not. It's in service. That's why the service department is twice as big which is why my job at right, at right now at this point is to let you know how things work in the back end so that you can protect them. Am I correct? Correct. And, and Dennis, I need everybody to understand this. If you want to create more value in an economy right now, at the t- time of we're shooting this at 2023, there's a lot of financial statements going down in, in car dealerships, okay, because it was easy last year and the year before. A lot of sales people's money are going down. The finance department isn't changing. Okay, like, listen to me, if you want to put yourself in a position in which you never have to worry about, like, like, if you want to be recession proof, I would say, this guy will teach it to you so that at 918-210-0254, you'll spend a day with me and him. Um, Keep, keep going. But I I love it, man. I mean, I just got to shut up because I love what you do for other people, but I love your, your standard is so high and the way you believe in other people. I'm just like, damn, man, you know, there's got to be at least right now. You know, a hundred thousand people that are like, dude, I'm ready to level up and go to the next level. Like, what what's my next step? This is it. No, this truly is it. I mean, to get good at you know at finance and hell, you know, salespeople, you know that this is a natural step. If if you're looking to make a a career in the automotive industry, I would say knowing finance is like one. It, it's it's a foundational building block of any successful dealership. Anybody that runs a, has a great finance department. To Andy's point is recession proof you know it you know there it just touches I, you know some guys in the fixed operations department or more that are on the sales side you know might might disagree with this but really when you think about finance they're that last touch the last touch with that customer and everything that happens in that finance department it it's either putting a bow on the customer's experience where they feel really good and they're going to come back and see you guys, the salespeople that work so hard, you've been dealing with them for weeks, months, days, six, whatever. And then you, the finance guys got to do a good job of taking care of that customer and also setting the dealership up because we don't just want to sell them cars. I mean, we do. We want to sell them cars. We want to sell them F&I products, but we want them coming back in our service drives so our service advisors can make a good living for them and their families. The customer has a good ownership experience when they come into our service department. Our technicians, the guys that like really work for a living, they're out there in 115 degree heat wrenching on cars. None of us want to do that. That's hard work. They need cars to fix. So when our finance managers 
can do a great job putting a bow on that experience, sell valuable F&I products in a transparent manner to keep the dealership compliant and stay Facts. out of court. Got to do it that way. If Facts. you're not doing it that way, you're not doing the job. Right? Period. I just stand, period dot end. There's no, there's no like. And doing it the right way is doing it this way. It is the right way. I'm, yeah. You know, there's no, this isn't smoke and mirrors. This isn't, you know, magic card tricks. It's just very it's communication. simple. It's communication. Yeah. Every, every effective salesperson, regardless of industry, they all have one thing in common. They're great communicators. Mm. And I really believe helping people become better communicators is going to help them reach their, their goal, whatever it is it, it may be. But, you know, getting back on track, when we're selling these finance and insurance products that the customers get value out of and when they show up into the service department, they got a good experience. And then when it's maybe the economy slows down, sales slow down for whatever reason, you've got this organic traffic flow in your service department so future salespeople have opportunities to sell another car when you move up and you're in the finance office or you're on the sales desk or you're the general manager or you're the dealer principal. It's just this life cycle where, that I really believe that finance feeds the automotive life cycle more than any other part of the dealership. Anything else. You know, and by the way, like this is the hardest thing because most people can't see their hand right further than the hand in front of their face they just they can't do this like like look if i was a, if i was a dealer a general manager and i really wanted to provide like the most mat, packed showroom floor to my my team ever it'd be simple my f and i team would be the most trained the most best attitude the most loving the, the best communicators in the world and they would literally make sure that when every customer left, they would be doing service in our service department, number one. And then number two, they would be protected so when something broke, they would stay happy so they could get it fixed. So that bow that you wrap on it stays there the whole time. And by the way, all we're doing is nurturing. I think the reason why people don't come back is because they don't have any nurturing. So if the service department does a good job, that nurturing is there because that finance contract was sold, so they come back to your company, that means they end up back on your showroom floor. It just creates a natural flow of people. Yeah. And you know, most people think, well, I got to take care of business today. How many years are we going to keep saying that? If, and by the way, if they were trained, you'd be taking better care of business today. You'd be making more money on your customers and your customers would love it and they'd be back to buy more. You know what I mean? Like, 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 dude, the common sense stuff just seems to be missed. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, spend more money in advertising, but don't teach our people in finance to be great. Spend more money in advertising, or we need to make more money in finance. You're not going to do it until your people are more skilled. It can't happen. Now, at our last event that me and Dennis had, um, a lot of companies sent their people out. So if you're a manager, you're a general manager, and you have one or two finance guys that you would like to send out to this event, you text the 918-210-0254, send them out. We'll send them back the top 1% in the industry. Guaranteed. Andy Elliott, or, 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 or mark my words, stop following me and never, ever do business with me again. I don't partner with anybody. Okay, this is the only guy that I partner with because he's dangerous. And you know what I love about Dennis too? I gotta say this, your compliance, like like the way that you operate and you and you talk about doing it right, right? Like explaining value and selling value, so you sell valuable products. Like you really can't like it may cost two thousand or four thousand or five thousand for a warranty, but really you can't even put a value on what it does, especially in now how expensive cars are getting to work on, the machines, the diagnosis, it's you know two hundred dollars an hour just for labor in the service department for what parts cost. I mean, dude, like these things are actually undersold. A hundred percent. I mean, that, no? and that's the thing we got to talk about as, as professionals, you know, specifically in the, the finance department. And that's something that, uh, you know, is foundational, I believe, to a really successful finance manager is making sure you have a good base level understanding of the entire dealership's ecosystem. You need to know, you know, what your store's labor rate is. You got to know it. You got to know, you know, how much things cost to fix from tires to wheels to windshields like you have to know those things and you have to be confident when you say say it and explain it to the customer and it's got to be 
believable, but a, a lot of where a lot of guys and gals fall short is they're not doing the the homework and have a good broad understanding of the ecosystem. And it's not sometimes it's not their fault, right? They just don't have somebody that will will well, slow standard, down. The standards are, are so low to what a prof guys. I'm gonna say one thing. This is why this is your lucky day. The standards are so low in the automotive industry for what a finance person should be held to the standard of that their people are missing, dealerships are missing $10 million a year. Just I'm not, I mean, easily, I'm not running their finance department right. And by the way, it's because of human capital. Mm -hmm. What I know is that it's normally, now there are better products than others, there are better warranty companies than others, but the people are what make the difference. And you know what I know, if there's any general managers watching this and you don't have the finance department that you want, do me a favor, send one person that you know that cares. I didn't say that knew the automotive industry, that cares and send them to Dennis and Dennis will send them home the best, running the best per copy, the most products per deal and literally leave the customers feeling like there's a bow on the deal at the end of the uh, transaction. Which by the way, I love Dennis, you always talk about like being relational, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, so many people see deals and they say, oh, well, that ain't gonna make any money. Every deal can make money. Every deal can make money. And people don't understand that. They've been sold a lie, okay? Which is why it's, it's, it's a good, when we do these one day events, to reset people's thinking. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, hey, a lot of people like know the product that they sell, but they don't have the right mindset. They don't have the right perspective to look at deals anymore. Mm -hmm. There was once a time when they, they, everything they saw was like, oh yeah, this is great, that's great. But now they say, oh, that's bad, this is bad. They find everything that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like when you get away to these events, you know, you, you have a, a way to look at deals to show people where all the money is. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love, but also how to stay compliant and do a great job. A lot of people hate, Finance people, car dealerships, they hate car salesmen. And the reason why is because they're amateurs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, you just do such a good job of building pros. It's crazy. You know, and we talked about the Nilo group. Like the Nilo group is 100% pro. Yeah, no, we're, we're um, dude, we hold everybody to a very high standard. Super high standard. Super high. And Highest standard I've, I've almost ever seen in the automotive industry. You know, and it's not just numbers, Andy. It, you know, I mean, numbers are important. At the end of the day, we're in business. We all want to make money. You know, but it's very important. You know, we want to take care of our customers. We're we've been in business for over a hundred years. You guys take care of people. To uh, I, I watched a customer that was unhappy with a car, and they just took it back. Yeah, we just we just take it back. Listen, I like just just give it back. We love you. Like like whatever you need. We'll, we'll get you next time when yeah, you're ready. I, I I mean when I say this, like it almost goes against the grain of the automotive industry but it's why you guys are growing so fast and so successful. Um, but who's doing all that? Well, number one, it's the standards from up above, from the leadership, right? But it's also the way your people are trained. Well, I think, you know, training is a big part of it, but you know, a lot of people put a lot of focus on the, on the customer experience, which I think is important. But one thing we really hold at a, at a high value, and I, you know, I would be comfortable saying this, I'm more, in tune and more um, keyed up to make sure our employees have a good experience. I want them to have a great mm, place to work. Well I want them to be happy. I want them to be able to go home and enjoy dinner with their families, you know, a few nights a week. Cause there's late hours in this business. We, you know, we have great uh, hours of operation because we do, we want our, our people, our salespeople, finance managers, everybody. We want them to have good family lives. We want them to be fresh and ready. And when they're off, I don't want them thinking about the Nilo company. You guys talk about it here, be where your feet are. I want them to be able to do that when they're at their homes with their kids. Um, you know, that's what I want for them. And then that way when they come back and they're, it's showtime, they're on the main stage, they're with a customer, yeah. they're on the phone, they feel good about where they work because that, I really believe that translates over to the customer and then the experience Facts. takes care of itself. Yeah. You know, and we, we do have high expectations. We're, we're very proud of our, you know, our PVR and penetration and, you know, those are all numbers on a page at the end of the day. And, you know, that's how we're paid. But I think when, as an industry, if we get more into taking care of our people and make sure they've got a good environment, and that's a, an, an environment me, means to me, having somebody that cares to invest in another human being, mm -hmm. 
and make sure that they're on a track to go where they want to go in the future so they get that growth and fulfillment that we're all seeking. If we can do that, a lot of this other stuff just happens organically. You'll get better results just when you got a good work environment. I truly believe that and you know the rest with the training and the presentation and the handling of objections and making sure that everybody's dialed on that, that, that just becomes the, the icing on the cake in my opinion. And I think we gotta do that as an industry uh, more. We gotta do a better job at that so we this can- It's a shortage of good leadership. Well, it, it is. Leadership is, uh, you know, leadership is a tough thing. And you know, you've talked about this, the, the sales uh, arena over the last couple years with, with COVID is, you know, it hasn't really done us any uh, good. It, it was good from a financial standpoint for a lot of people, but I really think it, it stunted our better. growth. Yeah. It, no, we, we, we stunted our It made us growth. worse. Yeah, it, it was, you know, what do they, you know, fat hogs get slaughtered first, or you feed the bears, they forget how to hunt. Whatever the analogy is you want to make, that's kind of been a byproduct of, of COVID. And I feel, I feel bad for a lot of guys that got started in the business a couple, three years ago. And hey, some of that's just, you know, it happened to be when you were born, nobody can control that. But you got do, tricked. You got tricked, man. And you know, it's like, it, it, it wasn't you got, nobody like deceived you. It's just, you know, it's the it market. It was a fake market. It was a fake market. And you know, the, the market, I've been doing this since 1997 when I turned 18. And you know, I've watched the waves, the ebbs and flows, you know, from how the lenders, you know, change their lending habits. Rates go up, rates go down, advances go up, advances go down. They want more stips, they want less stips, they do no stips. It's, you know, it's very cyclical. And I think for, for you sales guys, especially the ones that are newer in the business, I really believe, you know, coming down here to Scottsdale, spending some time with us, talking about finance, you know, is really gonna prepare you for the next stage in your career, not only in automotive, but I, I really believe there's some transferable skills that you can take with you wherever you go. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you a quick story, man. One of the most, Cool, the coolest story I ever went, I went down to a, a dealership, an independent dealership in my market, because I got, you know, I do some other business yeah. outside the Nilo company. Yeah, work. and by the way, Dennis does, he does run, um, tell what you run. So I have a finance and insurance product company, you know, I would compete with a, a Zurich, nowhere near the size. Yep. You know, I would say I'm a little bit more boutique. But you're you know. more hands-on. I am more hands-on. I, yeah. I, I would say I'm, our, our company is a little bit more high touch, quality interactions, yeah. um, because I don't want a lot of accounts. I want quality accounts. I want people that want to get better, not only just in finance. I want them to. I want them to want to get better in all asset facets of their operation. Yeah. So if you're reaching out um, and you want to get tickets to our event, you're going to text text the nine one eight two one zero zero two five four. If somebody is looking um, for another, um, for maybe to talk to Dennis yeah. about what you can do, um, give him your number. My, my, and they can text you and yeah, you my can cell phone is 916-899-7139, you know, and, you know, I'm, business has got a fit. To have a good business partner, yeah. you got to have a good fit. People want to do business with people they like. It's, it's true when you're selling someone a car or you're selling them a repair in the shop. They want to know and feel like the other, the person on the other side of the desk has their best interest at heart. A, de a good deal is only fair both ways. See, I, I tell this to our sales team all the time. Yeah. Is, and I'm cool telling my customers this, if it's the right car and the wrong deal, I don't want your business. If it's the wrong car and the right, I don't, I don't want it. I want the right car, the right deal, because I want you to feel good about your experience here at the Nilo company, because I, I don't want to sell you one car. I want to, I want to so be there when you're, for your next car. I want to see you in service. Yeah. I want you to, I want you to be around with us and, for our next hundred and, years. And that's, that's why people miss it. Mm -hmm. But, but I want, you're going to tell me a story and I want you to tell to me, but I wanted everybody to know that if there is a dealer watching <laughs> small or big, you love independence. I love everybody, man. Yeah, I know. But I, I've seen you grow independence really fast yep. on a dangerous level. I mean, there's, there's some stores that, you know, sell a thousand a month that we've done business mm -hmm. with. And then there's some that sell 20 a month. So, uh, you know, I just want everybody to know that if you need Des Dennis's assistant and you're an owner mm -hmm. or general manager, you're welcome to text him directly. Um, 
and I, and I just love giving him a plug to help you if it is a right fit because he's very educated, very smart, and if he says yes, he don't take bets, he can't win. No, 100%. I okay. want to deliver. Yeah, so so tell us the story. So, I, you know, I went down to this local dealer. Good, you know, a good friend of mine, he was a referral, actually, from an a, account I earned when I was working at Zurich, and, you know, hey, you're doing such a good job. I want you to go see my buddy down down in uh, Sacramento. So I'm like, cool, I'd love to meet him. And, you know, I'm sitting there talking with him and, you know, we get a good relationship, we're doing business, you know, and then eventually he goes, hey, Dennis, I, I'm really looking for a sales manager. So, you know, I got a pretty big network of people. And uh, so I so I get a referral, I'm like, hey, man, I really think this would be a good fit. You're gonna get a lot of latitude to make an imprint, and make, you know, put your stamp on the place and they need a leader. And, uh, you know, I bring him in and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this guy's conversation. And when he was talking to the owner about coming on board, he told this story about another guy he had worked with who, who worked with him much closer than I did for a lot longer. But he goes, he, he, and I forget how it came up, but, you know, the moral of the story goes, man, this, this guy, his name is Mike Lozano, I'll give his name. You know, he really made me what I am today as a, as a sales professional. He really showed me all the basics, showed me he cared, and, you know, helped me find success. He, you know, he battled through me when I was in a tough place in my life, but he really made a meaningful impact in my life. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it weren't for that guy. And I feel like as leaders, that's the goal. I want somebody to say that about me when I'm not around. I feel like if we do that, if that's the target and we aim for that in everything we do, like, dude, we're making meaningful change on the world. You know, I mean, and it's it's one person at a Thanks. time, um, you know, and it, it's a lofty goal, but it takes, uh, you know, it takes slowing down and, you know, you know, putting yourself aside, I think, which is hard to do because we all got families, we all got goals. But, um, you know, leadership is getting stuff done yeah, through yeah, the other people. Well, the qualities of a, a great leader is uh, to not have self-interest. Correct. To f have the interest of other people. And sometimes you gotta make hard decisions as leaders that aren't always in the best interest for you, but they're in the best interest for your people. No, 100%. And, you, and a, people don't get that anymore. No, they don't get it. You have to, there's so many things like, you know, when you, when you think about tribes, every tribe has a chief and that's what a leader. And when things are going tough or going wrong and you look, look at to today's market right now, you know, it's tougher, it's hard. They, they need that, that chief that is, you know, going to assure them and show them that everything's going to be okay. We're, we're going to be fine as a tribe. We're going to come out on the other end and uh, we're going to be good. You know, it, it's, it's the leader's responsibility to give the tribe that level of certainty. So when they're on stage, they got nothing to worry about than the other human being in front of them. We've all heard it. Love the one you're with. And our salespeople, our finance managers, our sales managers, anybody in the dealership, they can't truly love the one they're with if the leader is not giving them the certainty they need. Mm. And I really, really believe that that's, that's the goal, right? And it, and it extends when you're talking about the, the culture. And I know you're, you know, dude, you're a culture monster mm. here. You've got a culture you believe in. And I read a a great book and it's called uh, uh, Tribal Leadership. If you haven't read it, I, I, I'd suggest you pick it up. But there's a there's a line in that book when it comes to preserving the culture and, uh, you know, and I might butcher it, but, you know, basically it is the first clean kill awakens the herd. And, and it's in the context, if you have somebody in your store that is killing the culture and everybody else is on board, it's your responsibility to preserve that culture and and keep it good for the masses that's the leader's job is to, to safeguard that most leaders don't have the courage because it's, i'm gonna explain why a lot of the time that toxic person is usually the highest producer yeah sometimes it's not but a lot of the times it is and that pride that ego and that entitlement the eye rolling in meetings mm -hmm. the i don't have to do this yes it feeds into everything else and people think, well, if I was to get rid of that guy, well, we're already not doing well enough, then I would really get my butt kicked. Now, what would happen is your people would respect you and they'd rise. Yeah, they, okay? they recognize the void when that, if it's that top, exactly. they recognize the void. And, and that they person know. is probably doing better than everybody else because he's killing everybody else, mm -hmm. okay? But a lot of people don't see things that way. Um, you know, I think this also, this event we're doing, okay? I think this is, would also work for anybody 
not in the automotive industry that is maybe currently a person who's in sales in any industry, in any industry, or who works somewhere and is thinking, man, I want to learn more about automotive um, opportunities. Coming out and sitting down, I, I believe time and experience don't mean anything. No. I like, mean, I love a blank slate, to be honest. Like, like listen to what yeah. he's saying. He goes, I love a blank slate. So. If you're watching this, if you're in finance and you're looking to run your numbers to three, four grand a copy, you need to be here. If you're wanting to get into finance one day and you're in sales, you need to be here. If you're a blank slate and you're in any industry at all and you've never sold a car in your life, you need to be here. Yeah. Dennis, you're gonna bring the heat and teach everybody. No, I'm fired up, man. You're, you're, you're spot on. I think uh, coming in, having a nice conversation, talking about the, you know, the basics, um, you know, can, can you, we'll can you tell us you. what all, what all we'll cover at this training? I mean, just so like people can understand from like compliance to closing to overcoming. Yeah, uh, yeah 100%. I, you know, I, I definitely like to talk about the overall ecosystem of a dealership, how important each department is to one another. Like one really can't exist without the other. And with finance being, in my opinion, the center and the, the big impact, because if you don't know how important something is, you're never going to give it the attention it deserves, mm. right? So we got to talk right. to that at a high level and give the examples as to why, right? I think that's the that's the starting point right there, you know, and it, and it is. So when you, when you think about sales, you know, the, the automotive industry, you know, has a bad reputation with consumers. And, you know, quite frankly, a lot of it is deserved, right? You know, we can read the news and things happen in sales and then it goes into the finance department and either the the finance manager just does it because that's the way he was taught and i'm talking about doing you know uncompliant behaviors mm -hmm. breaking laws breaking the, regulations the, and this is huge general managers owners everybody listening here dennis is a compliant freak I mean, compliance in the state of California are pretty deep. No, I, I, there's, there's, I mean, the, it's tough to, to find states. another state is, is Yeah, stringent. that's tough. And yeah. by the way, so teaching, we're going to yeah. teach from a standpoint of like, yeah. this flies everywhere. Oh, 100%. Man. Right? You got so to like, train to the lowest common denominator on oh that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I just want to tell you like the safety of a company, the safety of a dealership, the longevity of staying out of court, yeah. sleeping at night, it's called heaven on earth. Well, guys, and, and for you in sales, right? I mean, you want to go home in finance, a salesman, you want to go home and feel like genuinely good about the service you provided. And if you're not doing it right in a compliant fashion, you're not going to live. You're, you're not going to you're not going to feel good. You, you're well, not, this you, industry won't last long for no, you. It, it won't. I mean, yeah. that's why we Income have regu well, that's why we have regulators that are all coming down on our industry is because we're, we're not doing it right. And like I said, sometimes it's not deliberate sometimes it's just like the, who, the guy that's you? been there 40 years you know that's the way they did it in the 80s or whatever and i'm being you know yeah, a no, little no, bit no. extra but, but somebody taught them yeah. wrong yep and things change things do change it's yes. always evolving and, and i love that about this this event things have changed and this man is up to date at today what's good what's I not i don't have a choice no exactly but and by the way either does anybody in and i like store. it <laughs> yeah. Well, number one, it, yeah. to me, it allows you to actually have an unfair advantage over everybody else because in a, in a, in a world full of amateurs where mm -hmm. people don't know how to do their job, they don't know how to explain value properly, they don't understand how valuable the finance department is, they don't understand how it protects yeah. people, they really don't understand it because they got in there just to make a check and they don't really understand how precious and important it is mm -hmm. and profitable. Guess what? They're amateurs you guys are going to be taught to be the best in the world yeah this is crazy man you know i always talk about because I'm, I'm i'm the sales guy so i always teach you know how to close influence persuade paint pictures tell stories do all these things he does the same thing but he does it in the finance world which pays a lot of money mm -hmm. it, it allows you to be a very valuable employee yep. um, it allows you to basically run your own business inside yep. of a business yep. and man like it's a great life mm -hmm. if you're the best. Uh, absolutely. If, Not being good, it sucks. No, if you're if you're the best, right? And for me, you know, I tell everybody at uh, you know the Nilo company, our finance team, like, I expect all of you to be unicorns. Mm. You know, I want you to run great numbers. I don't want bad CSI. I want you to have an amazing relationship with the people in our business office that make sure we get paid, cars get registered, trades get paid off all the stuff we sold them gets registered so they can recognize the value of it when they need it the most, mm -hmm. no matter where they're at, right? 
they need to understand that. They, they need to have that. They need to understand and know, and this is something we talk about, is how all these different F&I products like work. Like you should know how to walk through a claim. If if your service Most advisor have no idea. If your service advisor can't call in a claim and maybe it's can't or maybe it's won't or hell it could be because they're not familiar because you're not selling things further down the menu so they don't have experience. That's right. They don't know like you need to understand how that works because when you sell them I don't care if you're just selling them a car or you're selling them an F&I product, you're selling them a promise. And if you can't deliver on your promise, dude, what are we doing? You know, and I really believe that. And, you know, and all that kind of wraps in to the compliance piece, because if you're not making customers feel good and they don't have a good experience, that's when they start opening their mail from the attorney that's looking to do a class action lawsuit. That's when they're calling the dude we all see on the billboard when we're driving into work, you know, Larry Lemon Law or whoever they are, and they start looking and asking questions. And this is that other piece about putting a bow on it, right? When you close that file, and this is what we're gonna teach you, when you close that file, you, like it would be something you'd be proud your mom would put on the refrigerator. Mm. Like, man, well Andy said. did a great job on this project. It's clean, it's tight, all T's are crossed, I's are dotted, and then touch it once. Make sure it's done. We don't need to be focusing on yesterday's business. We need to be able to be focusing on the individual that's in front of us right now, delivering a great experience, great service, maximizing our earning potential and making them feel good about it. And then so our salespeople are able to continue and focus and give us more opportunities. But we got to talk about it and make sure everybody understands all the stuff that goes in to putting together a tight little deal. because. If you're the guy in finance right now, and I know you're out there, right? And it might not be your fault. Maybe you haven't had somebody to invest the time that you don't feel good about how you're doing it. I'm gonna fix that for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel good about what you're doing. I want you to not only feel good, but I want you to know that you're doing it right. Because if you're running big numbers and getting a big paycheck and you're not doing it all right, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's all for naught if your owner's cutting checks for deductibles on their on their insurance policies, you're uh, writing settlement checks, you're involved in lawsuits, and you're in court, and you, you know, you're just doing all this stuff because either you didn't know or you didn't train, you, you gotta get fixed up. Because we are in a, a, an era in the automotive industry where government uh, oversight has probably not been higher. So the table stakes right now of becoming a good finance manager are about as high as they've ever been. Um, and then also, if you're a sales guy, because you can do all those things at a high level and you can show up to your interview, and I'll get you prepared to interview for that finance job you want so you can get your foot in the door and, and know how to do it right, that's why the upside in finance is what it is, is because the, the dealership's livelihood to a large extent in the legal arena depends on it and it also depends on it out in service to a large extent. Mm -hmm. So table stakes of, of being a true pro, knowing the craft inside and out and how you impact the dealership, dude, like you, you gotta get it. And you know, when, when you come in here to Scottsdale, Annie and I are gonna make sure you walk out of here being ready, whether it be ready for an interview to get your foot in the door into finance or if you're finance, you're gonna elevate your dealership and hell, I'll even go this far. Some of you, if you want to be a sales manager, you got to have a good grasp on everything that goes into finance to really be effective because some of the best sales managers, they're, some of them are great at leading people and that's part of it, but like the extra layer is be able to see a deal Dude. where nobody else saw it. That's the difference where the sales guy goes from missing his unit bonus to making it and they say, Andy, dude, I can't believe you figured out a way to make that deal for me with the guys in Priceless. Finance. Thank you. Pri Priceless. Priceless. That, that F and I guy, that, by the way, listen here, so we're just gonna make a blanket statement. Number one, he's gonna teach you to be the best in the world at what you do with the skill, okay? And be the best closer in the country. Number two, he's gonna teach you to do it ethically at a level where every dealership in the world will wanna hire you. Um, number three, if you wanna make a lot of money, okay, he's gonna teach you to be the best, that's huge. Number four, your value is gonna be so high because these people are getting harder and harder and harder to come by. It's just crazy. And lastly, you wanna run a dealership one day? 
and will be in charge and will be the big daddy boss. Okay, you want to really get paid some real big money? You're going to have to be great at this. This is, to, this is to teach you how to be an operator. Okay, so I just want to say to everybody here is that this is going to be your opportunity, guys. Okay, number one, to train with me, to train with Dennis. Okay, 918, write it down, 918-210-0254. Send your people. You come. It doesn't matter. We're going to take care of you, and uh, it's going to be awesome, man. So I just want to tell you guys, Scottsdale, Arizona, you can text me for the dates. I'll send you all the info. Me and Dennis will be here together. Dennis will be flying in from Cali. Okay, we spend a lot of time together. I told you I don't partner with anybody. You guys already know that. I partner with him. You know why? Because he's the very best, and he's way better than me at this. I learn every time he's teaching it, I learn so much. I just can't believe it. Um, and can, can we can we finish this call with um, the standard? A great finance manager. What? How many products per deal should they be selling? What should they be running per copy? We've already talked about who they should be. But what are some numbers that if somebody's not hitting, we know that this is there for them, so they can leave hitting these numbers? Dude, I really believe that the uh, the potential. You know, and I look at it maybe a little bit different from some other people. You Good, know, I like the I, way you look I, at it I, because I love, you're, the, uh, you're the one teaching you know, us. So re forget everybody. Else. Reserve is important. You know, I always like to look at my PVR. In terms I love. Of I can't, I'm gonna interrupt him. I love this question he asks. Um, we're on a we're on a we're on a, a Zoom call, uh, training a company that sells about a thousand cars a month, and um, they were running about two grand a copy. Remember that? And Dennis goes, um, "What's the reserve?" And the reserve was like eight hundred. You remember that? And by the way, listen to me. So Dennis goes, so basically the reserve is just reserve, right? I mean, so they're only making $1,200 really per copy. Well, Andy, and I, I got to tell you, there's places that would be very happy with that. And, and, and I think people are very happy with that because they don't know maybe what's out there. So if you think you're good, right, there's, there's always a bigger, badder fish in the sea. Yeah, and dude, this is the big bad fish right here. And he's gonna teach you how to be the big bad fish. So let's go to the standard, but I love what you're saying about reserve. Like pull the reserve out. Anybody watching this, pull the reserve out of your team and see what they're really running. Yeah, no, I mean, and this is, you know, something we're gonna talk about, right? You know, for you to get good at anything, you gotta be able to strip the emotion uh, about how good you are or aren't. You gotta take it out of it. You gotta look at yourself objectively. You, in, in, in my opinion, the only way to do that, when you look at your, Put all the gross you put on the books, right? Year, month, however you want to look at it. Subtract all the reserve gross out of it. That's the number. And then take that number divided by the number of deals you did. And that's your number, right? And uh, man, I, I see- Dude, a lot of people don't want to see that number. Well, dude, it doesn't feel good, but man, like- That's the real number. That is the real that's number. That's how you know who your big bad fish are. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, I mean, putting up some numbers. I, guys, so so I, give, us some, give us some real numbers, what you believe that this should be the standard. And if they're not at that, we can ensure that when they leave, they will be running. Dude, this. if you're not, I really believe, you know, if you're not at minimum, at minimum, hitting 2,500 all in, you know, right around two, 18 to 2, like, this is for you, right? And even if you're more than that, like, I, you know, I don't, I don't even like talking about our numbers. No, no, I got it. Yeah, well, you know we know your saying, numbers. We know, they're good, but I- have already see, said one yeah. to 10, your guys are a 12. Yeah. So, I'm, and, and I mean like, and I'm in it at everything. I mean, just from even the owners, you know, meet, meeting the owners are, are unreal. If you want to be the top 1% in the industry, if you want to be so secure in your position, if you want to be untouchable, you want to have a dream life and create a lifestyle you never imagined, get paid all the money, and also service your customers at a level they've never seen it and understand better than anyone else, Dennis is gonna teach you to be the best, okay? And I'll be right here with him the whole time, but I wanna tell you guys, um, I can't wait to meet you guys in person. Guys, to get your tickets, okay? These sell out quick, we, we do smaller rooms, so it's very an intimate teaching. 918-210-0254, um, you can shoot me a text message I'll see you guys here. And lastly, give them your cell phone number one more time if somebody wants to partner with you on what, what, what are a few things that you do um, outside of training with me.
and outside of the NELO group with your insurance company? So we set up complete finance and insurance programs, service contracts, tire and wheel, paint and fab, any F&I widget under the sun, you know, we put forth the same products that we sell to our customers. Mm -hmm. we, we are in the high line segment, BMW, Audi, Porsche, Jaguar, Land Rover, and uh, those customers, as all customers, they deserve and uh, expect when they have an issue and we sell them something, it's got to perform at the highest level. So we, we want to offer the highest level of coverage available to our customers because they're so important to us. And, and also when somebody goes underneath your wing, you also train them. I do. I do train them. I so. mean, you make sure that they that, that only have the best product, but also... They are the best. Yeah, I am I, am I well, right? Absolutely. I, okay. You know, it, you could have the like best. Like it's not just a product. I mean, because I know a lot of people that are servicing, you know, dealerships and their warranty companies, but but they don't teach them to be the best. No, they they, they don't teach. They them want to, to be pick the up their check. You could have, and this goes out to you know the dealers, the GMs. You could have the best F and I products in your entire in the entire world, best thing ever. But if your people aren't trained. To doesn't sell matter. them at a high level, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take that a step further, you know, because we also help with reinsurance solutions for dealers. We set those up. You know, I got plenty of support, training, and know how myself to set up a great profit participation for you. Um, but if if they're not feeding the machine, the reinsurance machine, you could have the best reinsurance structure, the best products, none of it matters unless your people can execute at a high level. And if it's not a quality product that delivers on the promise at the end, dude, well, you're not going to have customers to sell it to anyway. So, yeah. you, you know, and it goes into compliance. So, you know, what we're going to talk about, you know, when we do this event here in Scottsdale is really giving you a holistic view of how important you are. We're going to prepare you for your next step in your career. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, those of you guys that are already in the trenches, I love you. You're my people. Yeah. Uh, we're going to help you go to the next level. And, you know, Getting better oftentimes means, you know, yeah, it's it's bigger numbers, it's more products per customer driving your penetration, but helping you get to yes quicker. I don't want you shouldn't feel exhausted mm -mm. after so, running a deal, man. Dude, you should he's be so like, good, man, Dennis. I gotta say, the way you teach is so good. When you present, you know, I always said make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and make it the client's idea every single time. You're the grandmaster at that, and 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 it's real. You're not, like you said, there's no, there's no smoke, mirrors, magic tricks. There's no card games. It's, it's real and it's real service. And, and dude, you take care of people and they love you for it. Well, and when you come in, man, just all you got to come in, open mind, you walk away with one or two things, no matter what you're doing in life, you're going to be a better place. And, you know, I'm really invested in uh, making sure you get value out of your time down here in yeah, the dude, desert. Well, first of all, we're going to make you rich. So. Buy yourself a ticket. And how are you going to do that? You're going to text me, 918-210-0254. You're going to beat me and Dennis in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're going to do a one-day event. It's going to change your life forever. You're going to eat lunch with us. We're going to train all day long. You're going to go home absolutely the best, top 1%. So, Dennis, hey, I love you, man. Will you give out your number one more time just in case? 916-899-7139. Call, text, anytime, man. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Yep, and then you guys text the 918-210-0254 to get information on your tickets. We love it. If you're a dealership, let us know how many you need. We'll make you a group deal. Guys, we love you. We got your back for life. Dennis, thanks for being here, brother. Guys. We'll see you in Scottsdale. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.